Hey guys, I have had my own photo website for about 10 years now and during that period, pretty much for the duration of it, I've used a content management system called WordPress. Now I recently gave my website an overhaul for various reasons, which I'll explain some more about during the course of this video. But I just thought I would give you the grand tour of the website, explain some of the decisions behind the way I built it, the way I did, and basically show off how you can create your own portfolio website using WordPress, uh, and maybe give you some inspiration to get away from photo sharing websites and social media, and take control of your brand and your website. So here's what my website looks now. Ignore the uh, admin bar on the screen, that's because I'm logged into the back end. So here's the home page, opens up with this image which I chose very carefully because not only it's one of uh, my most popular photographs and one I really like myself, but it's also uh, portrait dimensions. So when you see this website on a mobile device or you know, like a smartphone or something like that, it all renders perfectly and looks really good on the screen. So if we scroll down, we can see that I've got my latest article section here uh, with uh, some reviews and some uh, editorial stuff I've written about portfolios and stuff. Here's my main portfolio section. I won't go into any of these at the moment. We'll look in a second. Uh, here's my latest photo blogs. Uh, a little bit further down the page, I've got my latest videos. And further down, we've got a little bit of blah about me looking meaningful into the sunset on a beach. And here's the footer with some basic information, some links and my Instagram feed. So let's have a little look inside. Uh, if I click on articles, here are my articles. And I wanted to sort of showcase my most recent article. And so what I've done is a kind of a tiered design. Uh, starts off with this uh, most recent article, my Dummies Guide to Online Photo Portfolios. And then we go down to sm slightly smaller sizes, the next three, uh, which is a video review of the KNF backpack, an editorial, uh, and a text review of the same KNF backpack. And then we've got all my other articles scrolling down the page and this is an infinite scroll takes you all the way down the page and we can click on any of these for instance let's go into this low pro backpack review and you can see we've got this really nice layout here with the links uh, a little intro page there uh, all the text some nice photos I've got my gallery here and a couple of related posts at the bottom of the page. Okay, coming out of articles, we've also got a special section for the videos that I do on my YouTube channel, which you're watching <laughs> right now. Uh, these are just my latest videos and you can click on any of these. Let's say you wanna click on this one. Oops. takes us to the page and I've embedded the video right there in the page with a little bit of intro text. Now we've got the photo blog. Uh, I love doing my little photo blogs where I go out and take some photographs of a particular scene, a sunset or a sunrise, something like that. Uh, let's go into this one, which was uh, some photographs of the rainbow lorikeets in my garden here. And you can scroll down the page, got the pictures nice and big. And we've got a little go back to the top button. A little bit of information about my prints or rather the prints I don't sell anymore. Uh, let's go into the portfolio. Obviously this is quite an important section for photographers. You wanna showcase your images in the best possible way. Uh, and let me tell you, I've tried every permutation of portfolio known to mankind and a few others in between. 
so I broke my portfolio down into some themes. So I've got my best ones, what I consider my very best images. Uh, I've got the other theme sections, which I've called Dune, Gold, Above, Place, White, and Wide, which kind of sum up my style of landscape photography. So for instance, if we go into the Gold section, which is one of my favorites, I love taking these photographs. Uh, and we've got a nice little header image up here. This changes. Uh, randomly when you view the page. So if you come back and visit this another time, it will be different. And then we can scroll down and we've got my images. And if I want, for instance, to click on one of these, let's find what we want to click on. Uh, let's say this one here. Then we get a nice big Lightroom and I can click through with the arrows or I can use the keyboard as well. There's a little bit of an about me section which is only ever viewed by two people, you and your mum. But every website has to have one. And this is mine. It's just a little bit of information about me and my background. And uh, it's got my kit list in here, which is growing bigger by the day. All right. So that's the quick grand tour of the front end of the website. Let's have a little look what I did in the back. Okay, so before we go any further, I should point out, if you do not know, that this is built using a free content management system called WordPress. So the way WordPress works traditionally is you have a theme which governs the overall styling of your website. Uh, and into that theme, you put a series of pages which tends to be static content uh, or posts, which are things like blogs. So for instance, if we go into this section here, posts, then we can see all of the articles that I've written. And because I wanted to separate all the content on my website out into its various sections, I used a couple of plugins to create custom post types. It sounds complicated, it's really not. Basically, I said I wanted a different type of post. So I've got my normal blog post where I sort of write text, but I wanted uh, the, the photo blogs and the portfolios, which are essentially the same type of content to be listed separately on my site in the back end so I can manage it more easily. And so if I go down here, look, you can see I've got these two sections, my photo blogs and my portfolios. And if I go into my photo blogs, if you've ever used WordPress before, there's nothing really inherently different about this. They're just slightly tweaked post types. So I can separate everything out. And if you're making your own WordPress website for your photography, uh, then I strongly recommend you do something like this. So if we go into this rainbow lorikeets thing, uh, I first opened it in this tab here. You can see what it looks like in the back end. So here's the title and there's a little bit of introductory text that I put there. And because I set this up myself, you can also see down the bottom here in amongst the search engine op optimization stuff, that I've got this photo blog fields. And this is a special little setup I made where I've got a little custom gallery. Uh, and this is so beautifully simple to use now. So when I've got my photographs that I want to put in my blog, I literally just drag them into this window. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, I've also got an address function here, which I haven't added to this post. And I haven't even incorporated it onto the front end yet, but I wanted to kind of future proof it so that I could add geographic information quite easily if I wanted to. So there's nothing terribly difficult about this at all. It's a straight uh, drag and drop interface, uh, as easy as anything that Squarespace or Zenfolio or those guys are doing, that's for sure. So let's just come out of here and move on to another section. Yep, leave page. All right, let's have a look at, look at the uh, portfolio section again. This is just a little custom post that I made uh, and I've opened one of these up in a tab here for the sake of speed. Uh, and you can see that these are some fields that I created, the portfolio title, a description about it. Here is the gallery of images and you just drag them into this window. And if we scroll down the page slightly, we've got a hero image. Uh, and we've also got this gallery 
of uh, hero images. So you remember I said that it had that random image up the top? Well, here they are. And so if I want to change any of those, rotate them out, update them, I can just drag new ones in here as easy as. Okay, without going too far into the twiddly, heavy, codey, developy stuff, I'll very briefly explain the mechanics behind the custom post types, which is my photo blogs and portfolios, and those special fields. There are two plugins I use for that. The first one is this one, custom post types. And if we go into here and click on edit post types, you'll see them. So there's my first one, the photo blog. Uh, and that's literally all you have to do to create a custom post type. You come to this screen, you add new, and these are only three fields you need to enter. You just need to give it a slug, which is the kind of computer name for it so that the uh, WordPress system can track it and you can link to it. You give it a, a plural label and a singular label. It's also got other stuff down here, but you can automatically fill all this stuff in if you want. So as you can see, I've got my photo blogs and I've got my portfolios. So that's all there is to it, okay? Then all I did was with these custom post types, I just made some special fields that are associated with those. And to do that, I used a plugin called, if I can find it, uh, custom fields, here we go. So let's just go into this one. And so you can see, I've got it broken down here. We've got my editorial fields, my guide fields, photo blog fields, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if we go into the photo blog fields, for instance, let's click on that one, I'll click edit. And you can see that all I've done here is added two fields. The first field is called a gallery. And the second field is location, which is that Google map that you saw on the other screen. And if we click on edit on the gallery, you can see that field type here is gallery. And in there, I could set this to be anything I wanted. So if I wanted to have a special text section, I could just go up here and click text. So that would be just one line of text. Text area means a paragraph. Uh, you know, I can have check boxes and links and all sorts of stuff in here. So this enables me to customize those post types to include special fields that I can then display on the front end. So that's all well and good, but you may be asking yourself, what theme am I using on the site? And the truth of that matter is I'm not using a theme at all. Everything on this site was hand coded and designed by me. When I say coded, I mean, I use the, the tools in here. I didn't actually write lines of code. I'm not that clever. Uh, however, everything was created by my fair hand. There isn't a theme at use anywhere in this site. So I mentioned that I used a thing called Oxygen Page Builder to make the site. And the way that works is you create templates which tell particular types of posts to look a certain way. So for instance, I made a template from my photo blogs, which tells it where to put the title, where to put the text and where to put the pictures. Uh, it's pretty simple in the grand scheme of things. We're not gonna get down too far into the nitty gritty of this, but if we go into this oxygen section here and click on templates, you can see all the ones I've made for this site. So here's all my different ones. Some of these are re reusable parts, uh, but here are the main templates. The biggest of them all, uh, the most important is the main template and that defines the header uh, and the footer and then creates this great big section in the middle called inner content into which all my other stuff is inserted. As you can see, I've also got uh, templates for my portfolio, for my video pages, uh, for my reviews and all that kind of stuff. Uh, now, so if we have a look at one of these templates, let's say photo blog, I've opened that on a tab over here just for sake of speed. And you can see what it looks like in the back end. You, if you've used a uh, page builder or the block system in WordPress before, some of this might look slightly familiar. Uh, if I click on this title, for instance, uh, you can see in the structure panel over here, it's called heading and the one below it is called text. And as I said, you know, this isn't really beginner friendly stuff, but 
people have been asking me about this and so I just wanted to show you guys quickly how I did it. Uh, and so this is one of the templates and we can come out of here and look at the pages. The pages use the same builder, but you do edit those in real time. And so if I go on to the home page, for instance, uh, and click edit. All right, so here's the web page. If I click on the structure panel, you can see how I've arranged things here. The hero is just this section with my photograph and my logo. Uh, and then if we click on this new article section, it takes us down the page to here. Uh, and I've just made this section where it says, just display the first three articles uh, in the system. And here's my portfolio and my photo blogs and all the rest of the stuff. Uh, and so this is a static design that pulls in a few dynamic elements, which are these posts, but this is actual live text. So for instance, if I type, click on this latest articles, then I can change how that looks in the text area, which is kind of, you know, if you've used a page builder like Elementor, then this part will seem quite familiar to you. And it is exactly the same. And, you know, I can change the text color uh, and the font size. Uh, and I can also go into this advanced tab and change things like the spacing and the layout and add a border and all sorts of stuff to it if I wanted to. But uh, these are what pages look like uh, and you can edit them uh, using oxygen to look any way you want. But you do need to know a little bit about CSS uh, and PHP and all that kind of stuff. Not a huge amount. Now I've used a few other special plugins on the site. Uh, I've got my Google Site Kit here. Uh, which is directly connected to Google Analytics, so I can see exactly how much traffic I'm getting on the site. I've also got in here uh, a protective plugin called WordFence, uh, which keeps all the hackers at bay and alerts me if they try and uh, interfere with my site. Making my site that you just saw there, it took me uh, probably about a week to do everything. But the main reason I did it was because I just thought my site was slow and it bugged me, you know, when I went to it and looked at it and watched the pages slowly appear. It, I just thought of the people coming to the site and looking at it too. Uh, and search engines like Google place a huge emphasis on the speed of a site. Now, this is a system called PageSpeed Insights, which uh, is owned by Google. This is Google's page and you use this to find out what Google thinks of your page, how it thinks it will index. Now, we'll run this live uh, and I'll show you what kind of scores I'm getting now. Now, I'm gonna preface this, oh, autocorrect, thanks for that. Don't want to space there. Um, I'll preface this by saying that on my old site, before I shut it down, I ran this same software and got scores for my Elementor site. And on mobile, I scored 11 out of 100. And on desktop, I think it was 24 uh, out of 100. And let me tell you, those are terrible, terrible scores. So let's click Analyze. It'll take a minute or two for it to do all its tests. And then we can see what Google thinks of my page now that I've gone to the effort of rebuilding it and speeding everything up. So there you go, 98 out of 100 on mobile. Google have a mobile first edict. They base all your search engine listings on how the site performs on mobile devices, not on desktop. Uh, and I've got 98 out of 100. And remember before on mobile, this was 11 out of 100. So this has been a huge, massive improvement uh, in the speed of my site. Uh, and we can click on desktop two and I'm getting 99 out of 100 for my desktop score, which is pr pretty fucking good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, but this is why I did it uh, to speed up the site and you can see what Google 
uh, tests here uh, and it uses these systems to decide where you appear. This is the difference between appearing on the first page of Google and the fifth page of Google. All right, guys, I think that's more than enough for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this um, look behind the curtain of my website around the back end uh, and how I designed it and some of my thoughts about why I built it the way I did. If you have interest in this stuff and you want me to do more about this uh, from a photographer or a creative person's perspective about using this site, uh, I can just comment below uh, and let me know and I'll do that. Uh, if you want to see a video where I talk about just using the built-in stuff, the freebie stuff, the, the blocks builder and a, a free theme, I can do that too. I can set up a little test site and show you just how easy it is to get something up and running um, so that you have control over your site in every regard. Anyway, I'm going to start waffling if I talk about control and brands and all that stuff. So I'm going to shut up now. Hope you enjoyed this little look at my website, guys. If you did, like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you on the next one.